Last night, City Under Siege reported exclusively about grant money flowing from tobacco companies to MD Anderson Cancer Center and other local medical institutions. Tonight, Ned Hibbard investigates where else those dollars are going and why some people are concerned about it. For artist John Biggers, this exhibition is something of a homecoming. Biggers is a former Houstonian whose paintings, drawings, and sculpture are now on display at the Museum of Fine Arts, Houston. Images of Africa saturate his canvases, but for some people, the artwork is overshadowed by another image altogether. The highly recognizable brand name cigarettes sold by the Philip Morris companies. The same Philip Morris that's sponsoring the Biggers exhibit. And Dr. Joel Dunnington, for one, says, Tobacco and fine art don't mix. As an assistant professor of radiology at MD Anderson Cancer Center, Dunnington has seen what a lifetime of smoking cigarettes can do to the human body. It's a product that when used exactly as intended, kills people. And they've known it kills people for at least 40 years. That accusation is just one of many leveled at tobacco companies by JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Here's what the journal's editors said last week. The evidence is unequivocal. The U.S. public has been duped by the tobacco industry. We should seek the removal of this scourge from our nation. But what JAMA calls a scourge, the Museum of Fine Arts calls a benefactor. Well, Museum director Peter Marzio says it's his job to raise money, not to get immersed in politics. As long as ta tobacco is legal and you have high quality companies in this case, Philip Morris, which is truly a great corporation. The board is, is entirely supportive. I understand you've gotten a lot of flack about this. Well, we haven't gotten a lot of flack. There's, there's one small group that uh, tried to disrupt the opening, and that's been the only flack. Marzio doesn't mention this letter he received just after the exhibit's opening ceremonies from Houston City Council member Eleanor Tinsley. I wrote him praising the uh, exhibit, but expressing my dismay over uh, their accepting corporate contributions from Philip Morris. Tinsley accuses the cigarette maker of targeting women and minorities. An activist, Deloyd Parker, agrees. Parker has known John Biggers for many years. He says the African-American community should be sponsoring the artist's exhibit, not Philip Morris. I support Dr. Biggers, but I do not support Philip Morris and Tobacco Company. In fact, I will continue to fight to get rid of them as far as that business is concerned because of what they're doing to our community. What the tobacco industry is doing, says Parker, is visible from almost every street corner. In predominantly black neighborhoods like the Third Ward, most of the faces on the cigarette ads are young, healthy-looking African Americans. And Parker says supporting a black artist is just another way for Philip Morris to promote its own agenda in the black community. That's a claim the museum's director disputes. Apparently, the use of tobacco by younger members of the African-American community is significantly lower, so that suggests to me almost the opposite. But there's a potential market there, perhaps, is another way of looking at it. Yeah, that, that's, that's true. In response to Council Member Tinsley's letter, Marzio wrote one of his own, calling the cigarette manufacturer a corporate leader in race relations. Tinsley scoffs at that. She says the Philip Morris sponsorship simply sends the wrong message. It's saying cigarettes are all right on one hand, and on the other hand, uh, it's against the law to smoke in every public building in the city of Houston, including the Museum of Fine Arts. The museum's director wouldn't say how much money Philip Morris put up for this exhibition, but he admits it's a substantial sum. And if you don't think the tobacco companies would ask the museum to return the favor someday, think again. It happened in New York. I mean, the, all the major art museums went to the defense of Philip Morris against the, the banning of cigarette smoking. Why? Because the tobacco company threatened to pull its headquarters and its grant money out of the Big Apple if New York City Council passed the smoking ban. Philip Morris executives asked museum administrators to put in a good word with city officials, and several of the museums pulled what strings they could. The law passed anyway. It took effect in April and Philip Morris hasn't moved out yet. But some Houstonians are worried something similar could happen here. Philip Morris money goes to the Houston Grand Opera as well as to the Museum of Fine Arts. And former Post columnist Juan Palomo believes 
it's only a matter of time before those organizations are asked to go to bat for the tobacco giant. And they're going to do it because they're, they're, they're hooked on that money. It, it's, it's, it's like a habit, like it's almost as bad as cigarette smoking. There's nothing illegal about taking contributions from Philip Morris or any other tobacco company. But Dr. Alan Blum insists it's not a question of laws, it's a question of morals. Just because it's wrong doesn't make it indefensible because it's legal. You know, we're saying just because it's legal doesn't make it right. For City Under Siege, I'm Ned Hibbard.